Welcome to Location, Cabrini College's weekly news program. I'm Holly Prendergast. And I'm Liz Scopoletti. In this episode, we have all things Halloween, so stay tuned. Now, here are your news stories. Sister Barbara Staley from Swaziland came to Cabrini to talk to students to advocate AIDS awareness. Let's check in with Danielle for more on the story. Earlier this week, Sister Barbara Staley of the Cabrini Ministries came to Cabrini to advocate for AIDS and tuberculosis in Swaziland. Faculty and students gathered in the mansion for breakfast where students from ECG classes spoke of their plans to raise awareness. So they, I, I know we may have some questions in regard to ways that we might be able to do that. I wanted to welcome you all and I wanted to um, introduce to you uh, Sister Barbara Staley. Um, for those of you that may not know the background and history, Sister, Sister Barbara has been in Swaziland for seven years and has been working at Cabrini Ministries with Sister Diane Dalimov. We've made promises to poor people around the world. We need to keep our promises. Basically, we started with learning about, um, like, the refugees in, like, um, Baghdad and places like that. And then we we've done projects. Um, we've made illegal videos. Um, we've tried to make introducing ourselves if it didn't work, but to send over to you guys so that the kids can see where the projects are coming from. We get this great grace of being able to impact things on a national level, and because Swaziland is kind of the epicenter of these problems, and it's a small control group, uh, is it, it's very internationally interested, and so because we are one of the biggest providers of actual direct care, we also get to interface on international level with people in Geneva, out of the UN, et cetera, and with Center of Disease Control. Sister Barbara continued advocating in Founders later that afternoon. We are related, and is especially in the African reality. Um, Certainly, through my experience of the past seven years, I've become expert on HIV and AIDS in Africa and, and know a whole lot of stuff that uh, I, you might think I was a doctor that specialized in HIV if you, it, just from the experience of that learning. Um, and it has relevance to us uh, because we become more and more a global community and the, small, the world gets smaller and smaller. What was happening was there was Cabrini Ministries, Sister Barbara, Sister Diane, we're truly restoring hope. For location, I'm Megan Sokolowski. Now back to Holly and Liz. Back by popular demand, Catboard hosted a ghost hunter earlier this week to explore the possibility of paranormal life on campus. Let's go to Megan with more. Hey everyone, I'm Megan Sokolowski outside Grace Hall where Freak Week continues tonight with ghost hunters. Inside Grace, demonologist Dwayne Claude gives a brief presentation before heading over into the mansion for some ghostly tours. Let's see what's in store. I'm now in the mansion joined by Cat Board Director Lauren Sleva as she will give us a behind the scenes tour of what's in store for tonight's ghost hunter. You know, one of the spots they're going to be is in the foyer and as everyone knows the story about Mary and Xavier. Mary jumped for our glorious balcony to the floor and died. Woo! Not exciting. But it's scary, and that's where they're going to be looking for the first 20 minutes. Each section, they're going to be here for 20 minutes. Super fun. All right, the second spot we're going to be, if you want to come over here, um, they have this whole section to them to explore. They have all the way down the hallway where the elevator is actually at as well. And I've had my own experience in the elevator where something grabbed my foot. I don't go in there by myself. Um, this is the boiler room. Yeah, this is where the, most people had their experiences last year. We actually had Derek. He was here last year, and he said he saw his own little kid here. We are now in the, the fourth location. Um, this one, people say they see a guy in a top hat a lot. Um, last year, people came all the way down here to the hallway. <laughs> And um, they said this do the door over here, lights were going on and off. Um, breeze was going through. Last spot is the servants area. 
course, this is where the servants live. This is where a kid named Nick last year um, heard a woman talking in his ear, kind of, I guess, holding his shoulder. So this is the next spot they're going to be. We're going to be here for 20 minutes in each location. I'm super excited. I hope you're super excited. We then talked to students to hear their opinion of the event. It was interesting. Um, there was definitely, like, paranormal activity going on. So... Um, we were in the boiler room and it was just it, like cold and scary. Like there was definitely things there. It just was it really creepy. It didn't want us there. It didn't want us Most there. Definitely did not want us there. When we were upstairs, we met a little boy who thought we were funny. <laughs> he thought we were funny. He was um, he was a servant here. His mom also worked here. It was kind of cool. Yeah. Okay. Now back to Holly and Liz at the news desk. One of the most popular costume shops in the Philadelphia area is Pierre's Costumes. Our own Justin Silner was there for a special tour to see all of the different costumes. Hey guys, this is Justin Silner here. I'm here at Pierre's Warehouse in Philadelphia and you can see the many, many, many costumes they have here. Come here and check out all your holiday needs. Well, Pierre's Costumes has been around since 1943. Uh, we make, rent, and sale costumes. We've been doing it for a long, long time. We have over a city block long warehouse full of costumes, over a million of them. So we sell costumes, rent them, and we have a lot of the novelty stuff, the props for theater. Uh, we make mascots. We do a lot of different stuff. Right now I'm making a custom piece. It's a toga, and it has, it's going to have leather straps. Ooh, this is just a sample right now. But We've done things like the Tasty Cake character. Uh, I did a croc for, for the crocs. Those are pretty wild. They're big, enormous, one-of-a-kind characters that we've done for them. We can do costumes all the way up to the last day, although I'll be honest, it's not sensible to wait till the last minute. We have early bird specials going on right now where you can get a costume for a week for the price of a day. Uh, costumes range between 50 and 100 for rental, and that's high-end stuff that's beautiful. It's going to be altered for you. It's theatrical TV movie costumes. Yeah, right now we're trying to catch up on our Halloween alterations, and then we're going to be moving to some of the theater shows that are going out this month. Lots, lots to do. We have over a million and a half costumes in our stock. Everything's organized by either time period or genre. We have costumes ranging from historical recreation costumes to the craziest, most outlandish things you could ever think of, such as Lady Gaga, inspired by Marie Antoinette. We have everything from pirates that can be done a hundred different ways to colonial costumes to full body mascots complete with heads we have santa claus we have the easter bunny we have the statue of liberty anything you can think of we can do we have hats from here to tomorrow we have period costumes like i said we have men's historical suits we have vintage clothing Anything you can dream of, we can do. We work with celebrities, TV people, movie people, um, all the time. We kind of are a little confidential with those people because they want, they want to do uh, uh, things without us telling them. I will tell you, though, one person um, that I work with is I made the Fruit of the Loom guys for Warren Buffett. That was kind of cool. And that's all from here at Pierre's. Back to you at the studio. And that's it for your local news. Now here's Liz for Across the Nation. Thanks, Holly. Author Walter Isaacson's biography of Steve Jobs hit the shelves earlier this week and is set to be one of the year's top sellers. The biography is based on over 40 interviews with Jobs and hundreds of interviews with the people who knew Jobs the best. Jobs has been quoted stating that the reason why he wanted the book to be written was for his children to know their father. The last of the mega bombs has been disassembled this past week in Amarillo, Texas. The B-53 was put into service in 1962 and was 600 times more powerful than the bomb dropped over Hiroshima. Deputy Secretary of Energy Daniel Poneman said it's a milestone accomplishment and brings us one step closer to President Barack Obama's mission to rid the world of nuclear weapons. And now let's go around the world with Holly. Thanks, Liz. Muammar Gaddafi was killed by rebel forces after being wounded by a NATO airstrike late last week. But Libya's new leaders contest that Gaddafi died in a crossfire during a rebel skirmish. After being on public display in a refrigerated locker for several days, Gaddafi was buried in Libya. Now here's Jimmy for your weekly tech connection. Thanks, Holly. Microsoft Research recently unveiled a new technology that can turn any surface into a touchscreen. 
Dubbed OmniTouch, it is a wearable prototype device that enables the user to have multi-touch input on everyday services such as your hand or forearm. The shoulder-worn technology combines a laser-based Pico projector and a depth sensing camera similar to Microsoft's own Kinect camera for the Xbox. OmniTouch is still well within the proof of concept stage and it will be a few years before the consumer-friendly version of the system hits the market. Despite the retirement of the space shuttle, NASA will still be conducting experiments at the edge of Earth's atmosphere if billionaire Richard Branson is it has his way. Branson's private venture, Virgin Galactic, will be the first commercial space carrier in the world. Virgin Galactic has signed a deal to give NASA up to three charter flights, with the whole government contract possibly being worth as much as $4.5 million. The spaceship is 60 feet long and can carry eight passengers, including the two pilots, excluding NASA and corporate bookings, Regular citizens like you and I can start riding into space sometime next year. The only downside will be the price tag, a steep $200,000 per ticket. I'd start saving up now. Have you ever wondered why computer voices are mostly female? From GPS devices to the new Siri virtual assistant on the iPhone, many digital voices in our world today are distinctly female. According to a book published by Stanford University professor Clifford Nass, there are several answers. Nash cites a study which said the human brain is developed to be like, to like female voices, where fetuses were found to react to the sound of their mother's voice, but not to the other female voices or their father's voice. Nash said research has proven that people generally find women's voices more pleasing than men's. Tech companies may also avoid the male computer voices because the male voiced murderous HAL 9000 from the movie 2001 A Space Odyssey. I will stay plugged in for the latest tech news. Now back to Liz and Holly. Thanks, Jimmy. And now let's go to Danielle for your tip of the week. With this weekend being Halloween, my tip for you is to take some time for yourself and have fun. There are many local Halloween attractions not too far from campus that are sure to scare you this season. I traveled out to two of the top scares in the area for an exclusive behind the scenes look. Let's take a look at what is waiting for you at the Bates Motel. I'm Danielle Alio on location outside of the notorious Bates Motel in Glen Mills, Pennsylvania, where thousands of people every year come to enjoy the many Halloween attractions this place has to offer. Location has your exclusive look, so let's go check it out. <laughs> big year for the Hayride. We added a whole new trail and uh, three or four really big scenes. We also added a lot of new animatronics. I've got some really cool stuff going on out there this year. It's a family farm. We started the Haunted Hayride in 1991. In 1996 we built the Bates Motel and in 2000 we opened up the Haunted Corn Trail. Ah! Ah! What's the matter? Don't you like clowns? No, why not? The best part of this attraction is that people actually interact with you instead of just pop out and scare you. They can actually touch you. Definitely scary, especially the new attractions that they put in. Um, they did put in the um, the wolves. They didn't have the um, the two mechanical wolves last year, so that was definitely a great add-on to that. I like the circus. I wasn't there before. I don't remember that. The big clowns oh, and everything. Okay, so we just took you through the Hayride, we took you through the Bates Motel, and we took you through the Corn Walking Maze. And Location brought you the exclusive interview with Randy Bates, the owner of the Bates Motel. This attraction is a definite must-see before Halloween is over. I know I was definitely scared. For Location, I'm Danielle Alio. Now back to the studio. After visiting Bates Motel, Location didn't stop there. Let's now take a look at our tour of the haunted Penhurst Asylum. I'm Danielle Alio on location. Actually, I'm at the historic Penhurst Asylum inside the one and only Mayflower Building, which I know you probably have seen on many TV specials. This place is actually really haunted, and location is bringing you, of course, the exclusive behind the scene look at Penhurst Asylum. So let's go check it out. It was built in 1908, closed in 86. And I think they had st started the push to close it in 77 and whatnot. I do know that they did keep the m more aggressive patients in this building. Well, this up here, th there were dorm style downstairs, mm -hmm. where these up here are more, you know, more, I mean, kind of, to me, they're kind of more like apartments. Well, this is exactly where the dragging would have been, right in this hallway, right here. Here we are on the second floor of the Mayflower Dormitory where people have had reports of being poked, tickled, hair pulled, and seen shadows and even a little girl. 
We were closing up. I was doing a walkthrough on the second floor to make sure no one was still in here. And I got to the top of the stairwell and started down, down the hallway when I heard it. It sounded, the best way I could describe it, wet jeans on a, on a concrete. Yeah. And I stopped, and it stopped, so I figured, that'd be all right. <laughs> so I started walking again and heard it again. That's when I just turned on and went back down. I truly, absolutely believe that this place has things that happen here. We've allowed people to really learn what Pennhurst was all about, not, not only now, but why it was open and what the history of it is. And we've also got to take a lot of people's ideas and turn them into reality. We had an awesome canvas here to work with and we pretty much ran with it. And we also, like Mayflower, which we are using for the ghost hunt, is, is unique because nobody else allows people to just go into a building and wander around and look for ghosts in a building that is actually claimed to be haunted by a lot of people that go in there. Um, my, my favorite attraction is the tunnels because there's a tunnel system here that connects all the buildings here together. We're using about 900 foot of them but they're extensive, I mean, it's just crazy. And the, the acoustics down there, like for instance, I could be standing here and a drop of water will drip a thousand feet away and it sounds like it's right next to you. And we've had contractors, contractors that have done work here and come running up out of there and say, I'm not going back down there, you're gonna go get my tools. Somebody grabbed me, something touched me. I mean, freak, just people getting freaked out and saying, I'm not going back down there. So that's, that's pretty awesome in itself. So location just gave you a behind the scenes look at the many haunted attractions that Penhurst and Spring City has to offer. I hope you have the spookiest Halloween ever. For location, I'm Danielle Alio. Now back to the studio. <laughs> location wants you to have the scariest Halloween ever. So we actually have your tickets to the Bates Motel. For your chance to win the tickets, visit our Facebook page at facebook.com slash location. Now back to Liz and Holly. Thanks, Danielle. And now let's head over to Felicia for your Album of the Week. Hey guys, it's Felicia here with your Album of the Week. After a tug-of-war battle with her record label, Kelly Clarkson finally released her fifth studio album titled Stronger. This album showcases Clarkson's powerful vocals over your favorite pop rock singles. Clarkson remains a hard-hitting vocalist on the album Stronger. But the record lacks a smash radio hit and isn't anything different than what you would typically expect from Clarkson herself. Although the album's genre and quality is a little typical for Clarkson, the album serves up songs that can possibly cure disappointment, mend a broken heart, and restore empowerment in its listeners. Also, don't forget that if you're interested in purchasing Stronger, you can check it out on iTunes and be sure to listen to your favorite student DJs on WYBF 89.1 FM, The Burn, during the week. Back to the news desk. Now let's go to Mary-Kate for your weekly sports update. The Cavaliers fall athletic teams are going into their respective CSAC postseason tournaments. The women's soccer team finished their regular season on a 4-1 win against Rosemont College. The girls ended with just two losses in the Colonial Faith Athletic Conference. Corner finals for the Lady Cavs will begin this Monday. This past week was an upsetting match for the Cabrini women's volleyball team. They suffered their first home loss of the season. Their final game will take place this weekend against Keystone College. Cabrini College's golf team finished their fall season with 8th place finish at the Immaculata University Invitational. The Cavaliers finished the two-day event with a final team score of 658. High expectations are set for the Cabrini College basketball team this winter as they are ranked 14th on the D3Hoops.com preseason poll. The Cavaliers finished their 2010-2011 season with a ranking of 24-6 record and making it the Sweet 16. And for professional sports, the Flyers are finishing up the month of October with a record of six wins and four losses. That's all I have for you for this week. Be sure to tune in next week for more sports coverage. Now let's head over to Melissa for your most recent entertainment news. Thanks, ladies. According to the Huffington Post, Paranormal Activity 3 came in at the number one spot this weekend with an almost record-breaking gross of 54 million. Just 5 million more and it would have beat out the film Hannibal, which continues to own that title for the biggest opening for a horror film. Well, it was the biggest launch for the month of October. As Jennifer Lopez performed in Connecticut at the Mohegan Sun Casino's 15th anniversary celebration, she became so emotional she broke out into tears on stage. 
According to the Huffington Post, she decided to sing her latest song she wrote about love and perform with lookalikes of the men from her past relationships. It sparked up some old memories, she announced, and the crowd responded with a standing ovation. It has been three months since the death of Amy Winehouse, and her cause of death has been determined. So her family was right about it not being because of drugs, but it was because of alcohol poisoning. According to E, her blood alcohol limit was over five times the drunk driving limit. A doctor claimed that the singer was not suicidal and was withdrawn from alcohol for about three weeks until the night before her death. Look for more entertainments next week. I am Melissa Watt. Now back to Holly and Liz. That's all we have for you this week. Make sure to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our podcast on iTunes. I'm Liz Scopoletti. And I'm Holly Prendergast. Have a happy Halloween, everyone. Mm -hmm.